All right, guys, here we go. Pride DX300. This one has been completely done up by Mr. JTG, Joe the Grinder, a good friend of mine. Uh, you guys have seen me showcase some of his amps over the years. Uh, this is one he basically com completely refurbished, um, made, it in, made it new. Uh, I wouldn't say completely new inside and out, more inside than anything. But it has had a nice paint job, had a facelift done to it there. Uh, the front of it's in nice shape. A uh, very, very nice amp, one that I would not mind keeping myself, uh, but I am putting it up on the market for sale. It is available for sale. Now, this is going to be a local pickup only item. I don't like shipping tube amps at all. It's not that I'm incapable of shipping them, but anything can happen in shipping, okay? Uh, you can pack these things the best of your ability, and somehow, some way, you can double box them, do whatever you want to to them, and there's still a chance that they'll get damaged. So... I will say under one circumstance will I ship this and that's if the customer wants to pay me with a postal money order up front and you assume any damages that, that take place to the to the amp. Now I will put insurance on it, uh, I will insure it, but that's going to, that's going to, you know, I'll help you if there's a claim, I'll help you with the insurance claim, but what I'm saying is I don't want you to be stomping your feet. And raising hell with me if this thing gets damaged in shipping because I don't want to ship it so that being said I prefer local pickup cash on pickup that's how I prefer but if you demand me to ship this thing you want it so bad that you can't stand it uh, those are the circumstances in which I'll ship it okay now that we got that out of the way let's talk about the amp a little bit what has been done to this thing why is this thing so special well grinder has been through it the first thing I'll point out band selector is no longer a band selector it's a variable Okay, so this thing is like the ultimate driver for you guys that use larger amps. Specifically, something like a 3CX3000. This thing would be perfect for 3CX6000. Uh, would drive it pretty good. Uh, but a 3000, it would be really nice for. Or, if you want to run it into something lower, boom, you can dial it back a little bit. We'll demonstrate that later in the video. Maybe a turnoff for some people that like to multi-band. Uh, but if you're just a, a straight up... You talk on one band and that's it. This is killer, having that variable added. Preamp does work. Obviously the light's on, but uh, we'll listen to it here. That's the preamp on and off. So you can tell that it does work. It's got uh, pre-marks on the front here for where to tune it. I have tuned it for peak output. If I tuned it for average, it would do a little bit more average, but I have tuned it for PEP. So when we watch it on the watt meter, just know that it is tuned for peak. You can tune them for average if you want to, um, but it is tuned for peak. Now, the internal wise, what's been done to this thing? It's had the Nomad upgrade boards done to it. If you know anything about the Pride DX300, you know that's almost an absolute must if you're wanting to keep one of these. Now, if you're just buying one to flip it and you want to put it down the road, you know, sell it for six, seven, eight hundred dollars. A lot of people don't go through the trouble to put the boards in it, but the first thing I tell people when they get one of these, put the Nomad upgrade boards in it or you're gonna have a failure. Uh, maybe a year down the road, maybe two years down the road, but the Nomad upgrade boards are a must and this one has it in there. Uh, what else has been done to it? It's got a, a 4CX400 tube in it, been upgraded to a 4CX400 ra uh, rather than the stock. 250B that comes in them. They come with a 4CX250B, um, but this one has the 4CX400 in it, so you're going to see a little bit more output out of it. And these things are very drive specific. And what I mean is it runs a Tetrode, which is a low drive tube, and they will blow if you overdrive them. Okay, they are tough as nails, tough as any tube out there, but if you overdrive them, they will give up the, uh, give up the ghost on you. Uh, this one is set up for 9 to 10 watts average and about 35 to 40 watts PEP with the main focus being on the average power uh, that you put into it. Yes, PEP does matter, but the average power is going to overdrive it quicker than anything. So I'm telling you, 9 to 10 watts average, if you put 12 watts into this thing, it's probably going to give it up eventually. Uh, maybe not right away, um, but it will, it will not take being overdriven. Why that is... These tubes, the way they're set up, um, basically you have to pad down the input to them to make them run with the radios we like to use. Uh, otherwise, one or two watts would give it max output. Uh, they're very low drive, so you basically have to custom 
you know, custom set it up to take the drive that you're wanting to put into it. Otherwise, one or two watts, you know, would max it out. Um, I think that's about it to talk about. It's got a nice blower in it. I believe it had a uh, new old stock blower installed. I'm not 100% on that, but it doesn't make hardly any noise. Um, just a little bit, barely, when you first turn it on, you can hear it. You can feel it forcing a little bit of air out the top there. Uh, okay, so that's it. We've got it tuned out for peak. We'll show it on peak and average, and then I will demonstrate how the variable works. I had to put a 2,500 watt slug in um, because it was pegging the 1,000 out on PEP. So we're running a, a 2,500 watt slug or element. Here's a close-up look at the front of it. Again, this one's super nice. Every time I get one of these, I'm like, what the hell, I need to keep one. And uh, cause I really do like them a lot, um, but I always end up selling them. So uh, this one probably be no exception. I'm sure somebody will want to buy it off of me and I uh, will end up moving her down the road. Okay, let's get into the output test here. So we've got our 2,500 watt slug in there. We're gonna be looking at the top scale. Let's go ahead and uh, give it a key up here. We're rocking with about 250 watt dead key, maybe a little bit less. Uh, almost 500 average probably about 475 we'll call that again we don't have it tuned out for average we have it tuned out for peak we've just turned the peak kit on top scale about 1250 PEP audio check one two three the amp does run on 110 uh, I didn't think I, I don't think I mentioned that but it runs on 110 and that reminds me, it has also had a uh, super nice, brand new, long, heavy duty power cord installed on it. So there's a look at the uh, power cord. And you can see it's holding power, not falling back, not acting crazy, right at 1250 watts PEP. You could call that 1245 if you wanted to, but right there around 1250. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave it on peak. And we're wide open right now. You guys can see where that little marker's at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dial it back to right here. And let's see if that makes a difference. We were at a 1200 and look at that, we're at 750 now. Audio check, one, two, three. Audio check, one, two, three, audio. Okay, so 1200 to 750 PEP. Let's just come on up here and we'll go like uh, one o'clock with it there. Audio check. We were at 750 and now we're at, uh, what do you want to call that? 550. Audio check one, two. Audio. Okay. Let's come back to 11 o'clock. Audio check one, two. Audio check one, two. Audio check one, two. It actually looks like it came up a little bit. <laughs> Must be the sweet spot for it. Audio. Now we'll turn it all the way off. Hello, audio check one, two, three. So yeah, it's definitely got a sweet spot in it. So somewhere in between it starts picking back up again. Audio check one, two, audio check one, two, audio. So let's go 12 o'clock with it, see how it acts. Hello, audio, audio check one, two, three, audio, 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 check, 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 audio. So yeah, once you get so far back with it, uh, it looks like it jumps back up a little bit just how it's set up and how it's working, but you do have some variable to uh, to play with there. Let's uh, see what it does on low. We'll go back wide open and demonstrate it on low. So now we've got our variable wide open. This is average power on low. Oh, audio. Oh, audio. Oh, it knocked it way down. Like 100 watts average. And then PEP. Hello, audio check one, two, three, audio check one, two, three, audio check one, two, three, audio, check, one, two, three. about 275 PEP on low. So that makes a huge difference. If you can't get the variable set to where you want to, it's like, well, it doesn't cut back, you know, looks like about 550 or so uh, was the lowest it would cut back. You can flip this guy down on low and have it turned all the way up and you've got 250, 275 watts PEP and 100 watts average. So if you were driving something like a 3CX 5000 uh, that doesn't need a lot of drive, heck, you could even drive like a pair of 500Zs with it. 
uh, cut down that low. Now this is kind of overkill for a driver uh, for a pair of 500Zs, but with it cutting down to 275 watts PEP and 100 watts average, I wouldn't hesitate at all to, uh, to run it into a 2-tube 500Z box. So that's it, guys. You can call it a Super Pride, JTG Pride, whatever you want to. Um, probably one of the nicest ones I've had come through here. And if I was going to keep one to talk on, this would probably be it. Just because all the stuff that's been done to it and how it works. Yes, the band selector has been disabled to have this variable in it. And it basically works like a true variable until you get back in this area. And it starts coming back up a little bit. Uh, but you get a good, good, good bit of variation. Uh, we had it cut from 1250 PEP down to around 550 PEP. Um, nice amp. Like I said, the key is don't overdrive these things and they will last forever. They don't take up a lot of space. I've had several of them. Um, I think everybody that gets them and, and runs them appropriately uh, will tell you that they're probably one of their favorite amps they've ever had. So that's it, guys. Pride DX300. If you're interested in it, let me know. Shoot me a text, 423-299-3535. I will take some pictures of it and have it up on the website, roostercb.com. Again, I apologize to those that, that really want me to ship it. Like I said, I will ship it under those circumstances that I mentioned, uh, but I would rather not. Uh, I would just rather, rather you pick it up in person. Just had a nice gentleman yesterday come up all the way from Florida. Uh, he bought a single 3CX800 from me. It was nice to meet him. So I have people drive from all over to pick up stuff like this. Um, so as crazy as you may think that will be, uh, <laughs> people will drive to get stuff that they want. And uh, they understand that there's a risk in shipping. Uh, most people do. So too nice to, to risk getting it damaged in shipping. That's it, guys. Pride DX300. Audio. Check, check. Audio. Joe the Grinder built. Joe the Grinder rebuilt. Audio. Check, check, check. Audio. Everything works on it. Appreciate it, guys. Rooster in Tennessee. See you. Bye.